Hey everyone, welcome back to the Printosaurus. I am Aaron and today we're working with our 85X again. You can see here it looks a little bit different. Today we're going to install the 85X DIY enclosure. So let's not waste any more time and let's get right into it. The 85X enclosure kit is advertised as a DIY kit. What does that mean? Well, it means you get to customize it. You have to print some parts. You can see here, everything pink here has been printed. I used a cookie CAD PETG that my kids picked out. Uh, I think it turned out pretty good, but you're gonna have to print some parts. So it takes about 20 hours worth of printing. I did use the 85X to do all of my printing, uh, which is fantastic. Everything fits in the 85X, which is nice, especially for those that don't have more than one printer. So I'm gonna show you how to install your 85X enclosure, but first I had to take mine apart. I filmed this whole video and a microphone didn't work. So now I have to do it over again. So I'm going to disassemble this, but before we get that far, I just wanna point out a couple of things that you will have to do uh, before you actually do this install. So over here on this side, you have your spool holders. So if you gently pull up on your spool holders here, kind of move them side to side, they will pop off. So go ahead and pop these off and set these aside. And then the other thing we're going to have to do here is our hub. So our hub mounts like this and it twists on and off. So go ahead and twist that off and your PTFE tubes, they press in here on the top. Take a screwdriver or something and you can press down on these and you can release the PTFE tubes, but set your hub aside and then go ahead and remove your spool holder. Um, you have to be careful with this step because of the ribbon cable, but your screen, it slots in place uh, to the right here. So you're gonna gently push it back out and then just pull it up and set it on top. Do not tear that ribbon cable, be very careful. And that's because we're going to take a face plate and we're gonna put this here in the front uh, to make it match everything. So once you have all of that up and out of the way, you're gonna be ready to start this install. All right, so because I've already installed mine, mine is going to look a little different as we put this back together, but I'm going to show you what you need to do. So step one is taking your A1 and A2 columns. They kind of look like this. Uh, you'll have one that's uh, an A1 and one's an A2 and a slot in place like that and they would attach to the front here. Um, for order of operation, the front uh, here that I have my hand on, that's gonna be A1, B, C, and D. So keep that in mind as you reference this. So here is my A1 column. It is attached to the door, uh, which you will do in a later step. But to show you here, the first thing we're going to do is attach our hinges to our A1, A2 column. So to do that, you're gonna grab your M3 nuts and your M3 uh, by eight millimeter screw and you're going to screw that uh, hinge on. And once you do that, we're going to remove these top two screws here on the front and then we can now mount in place our column. So we'll take that. You're going to use your Phillips head screwdriver and you're going to set this in place just like that. And then you can now reuse your top screws and then screw in one, two, three, four, five, six additional screws. Once you complete that step, we'll be on to step two. All right, so for step two here, uh, we have our A installed. Now we're gonna do the same thing for our remaining columns. So we're on to the B column. So you're gonna grab, if you look on the inside, you can see they're labeled, grab B1 and two, and you can push these together. Now down here, you're going to remove another screw. It's an Allen. So grab your small Allen key, use it to remove that. And then we can just set this in place and grab our screwdriver using our M4 by six screws. There are three in the back here and one up top. And then this one on the bottom is that Allen key. So go ahead and screw that in and we are done with our B column. All right, so now we are moving on to the other side of our printer. 
turn you around here. And we're going to work with our C column next. So on this side, something to pay attention to is we removed our spool holders. We need to remove the hardware. So there's two screws uh, for each clip. Go ahead and remove those. Uh, we're gonna set those aside. We're gonna use some longer screws. Um, so just set those screws aside as well. Um, but we need to remove the spool holders before we can continue on with our other two columns. So here's a little tip for this side here. Don't tighten your screws in all the way yet. Um, I just kind of lightly screw them in place and keep them fairly loose. And the reason why is because we have to put our spool holders back in place. So just to make them align a little easier, uh, you're gonna grab those M3 by eight, the very small screws. We'll grab our Allen key. And just to make things a little bit easier with lining this up, um, what I did was I kept everything loose and then that way you can kind of move these around to get things to thread. All right, so now we are on to column D. It should be your last column you have. Same deal as all the others. Uh, you can just set them in place. Grab your Phillips head screwdriver, screw your screws in. And same deal, don't over tighten these just in case we need to move things around for our spool holders on this side as well. All right, so your printer should look something like this. The next thing we are going to work on is our face plate here. And that is where the screen mounts. There's two magnets that you have to press on the inside, make sure when you do this, you have your polarity right so it sticks correctly. A couple ways you can press these in place. What I like to do, uh, I stick a dab of super glue under there and I'll stick the magnet in and I'll flip it over and then I'll press it in place. That works pretty well. You can use your hand too um, if you're strong enough to just kind of push them in place, up to you. Uh, whatever method you have to do to get those installed. But again, make sure polarity is right. So where does this install? Well, it goes right on the front. It has the same slots that the screen has. Uh, so let's go ahead and get that installed. I'll show you how to do that real quick. So you've got some slots here, you've got slots here. So what I did um, was carefully take your screen, route the ribbon cable through the slot here and put this side in first uh, over here where the screen mounts. And then I just kind of gently bend this in place until it pops into the slot. And then you can push down until it goes into place. Now there's a ridge up here at the top, a notch. So make sure it goes down in the notch and then to mount the screen, uh, just align it just like you did uh, when we didn't have this faceplate on and you just simply slide it over until it locks in place. All right, so next up is our door. Uh, as I said, I already filmed this and I messed up my audio. So I left my door on for this install to show you guys, but an easy tip for installation, you're going to do your door handle. It has those same magnets in it. So go ahead and install those, press them in place, making sure polarity is correct. So you don't have any issues with the magnets uh, not attaching here to the frame uh, and then go ahead and mount that to your door. Be very careful because if you over tighten, uh, you could end up cracking uh, your acrylic panel here. Uh, once you have those in, what I did was take your door and use the magnets, press it in place like that, take your hinge and then on the inside you still have access to uh, go ahead and screw in the top screw, leave that loose. Um, and then what you can do is over here, our panels are still off, so you can reach in here um, and then do the same thing here uh, to the bottom screw. And then what you can do is kind of float this door using the magnet to kind of hold it in place until you get a nice gap that looks consistent all the way around. And then you can tighten in the top and bottom screw 
and then install your other screw for both hinges. And that will give you that nice uh, look. It will make sure the door closes appropriately. And then you have that same equal gap all the way around. Just kind of makes it quick and easy. Today's video is brought to you by PCBWay, pcbway.com. Jump online, check them out. For the month of September, they have a lot going on. You can get a TPU at a discount. You can also get uh, an upgrade to your PCBs. If you're looking for adding a splash of color, they offer a purple solder mask for the month of September, and there's a contest going on. So jump online to PCBWay, pcbway.com. Great customer service, check them out. All right, so next up is our side panels. Um, it's time to peel uh, all the uh, protective film off of your panel. Um, this can be a challenging step. I'm not a big fan of doing it. Um, I don't have fingernails that really work very well for this. So take an X-Acto knife, be very careful. Um, I would suggest maybe down here in the notch corner that you're really not gonna see. And if you just take the X-Acto and pick at it a little bit, you can pull and then pull that whole sheet off. But take those sheets off, you want the holes here. Um, it doesn't matter which panel you use. Um, there's only two of them, but you want the holes here uh, at the top. And you can take this, each side is slotted, and you can just slide this down in place. Now mine was a little tough to do, um, so just take your time. We don't want to break anything, we don't want to crack anything, um, but it should just press down in place and it will stop uh, right at those notches. So go ahead and do that for both of your panels. So now we're going to work on our top hat here. So uh, same thing, these are all labeled. You have A, B, C, and D. Um, so what you can do is just take those, take your screws. And what I did was take your screws and go ahead and put them in the slots. Just makes things a little easier when it's time to screw these in. All right, so we have our eight screws. So now just take a look at which one you're working with. And remember, A, B, C, and D. So now you can go ahead and put these in place. Align everything, take a long Phillips head screwdriver if you got one, it makes it a little easier. And remember, do not over tighten these. We don't want to strip anything. So just go ahead and start threading them in place, making sure the slots align correctly. Uh, and you just want these snug. We don't need to over tighten anything. But go ahead and do that for your remaining three. Uh, remember A, B, C, and D, and then we will work on our top hat portion. All right, so we have our top hat pillars on. Next thing we are going to do is work with our smaller panels. So you're gonna have one panel that has a cutout and we're going to press that plastic ring in place. So this one is for the side that the hub's on. So this goes towards the back. So if I spin this around, it will mount just like this. Okay, so for the other panels, they are all identical. So go ahead and install those. Uh, remember to peel off that protective layer. So next up is our top hat. So same deal, this is labeled um, and it's like a dovetail uh, type press fit. So just press these in place. A to B, B to C, C to D, and make sure the A corner is up here in the front. And you can just set these in place. Take your time for this step um, because it is grooved and you wanna make sure you get your panels in place. And we don't wanna break the tabs, so you can kinda of just manipulate, kinda of push things around to get this installed. So the next thing we're gonna do is our hub mount. There's a little spacer. Looks like this. So grab that, grab your metal hub mount, grab the two longer Allen screws, and those go right here uh, in the middle. Same spot that the hub mounted before any of this. So we'll just go ahead and put this in place. All right, so we got our hub mounted. You can go ahead and grab your hub. 
and get ready to use this. So next thing we need to do is take our PTFE tubes. You can route these through this hole here. And then we're going to take our hub. You can take our hub, twist it in place, and then look at these tubes. And we're just going to try and get them. Oh, look at that, mount it upside down. Whoopsie, pay attention to what direction you mount this. All right, so now we have our tubes. So we'll go ahead and press each one of these in place. So next up, we need to do our hub mounts. Now these are numbered, okay? See here? So you need to make sure you put them back in the right order and they're numbered because they have some resistance that helps with the spool winding and everything. So three goes on this side and four goes on this side. And then one and two go on the side closest to the screen. So they just slide right in place. Okay, so the last thing we need to do, we can mount our little handle here on our top plate. Now we can take this, once we get that mounted, set it up in place, and we now have a completed install of the 85X enclosure. That's it. All right, so to wrap things up, uh, today's video covered the installation and everything you need to know about getting your enclosure set up for the FlashForge 85X. Uh, a couple of things I wanna do uh, moving forward uh, that I'm gonna do another video on. I wanna test some ASA and ABS. I didn't print anything with that yet because the 85X doesn't have an exhaust setup of any kind. It doesn't have a filter or anything. Uh, so if you're going to print ABS or ASA, you're going to need to do it in a well-vented area. Uh, I jumped online on printables. There looks to be some uh, links to some bento options for the AD5M. So I'm going to print one, put one together, and see if we can't get that adapted uh, to our 85X back here. Uh, and see how well that works to uh, print ASA and ABS now that we have things enclosed. Uh, in terms of printing performance for everything else, PLA, uh, PETG, uh, no difference really. Um, the enclosure does hold temperature well, uh, so it keeps things pretty relevant to bed temperature. Uh, so if you're looking uh, for that, uh, things turned out good there. Uh, but it didn't affect any of the prints. It didn't improve uh, any of the prints. But those materials typically print extremely well uh, without an enclosure. So uh, there's that. Uh, assembly overall, quality, everything. Uh, no issues, no complaints. Uh, you get to customize the whole thing, which is cool. Uh, and like I said earlier in the video, about 20 hours of printing uh, before you get started. So just keep that in mind uh, if you're going to tackle this project. Comment down below. I'd love to see what colorways and everything you guys end up doing. Uh, and, you know, please like and subscribe as well. I appreciate you guys. I'll see you guys in the next video.